what I've learned through this process is that the unique multifaceted life that a veterinarian lives. Mm-hmm. You think about in, in our discussions, you know, one minute a veterinarian is seeing a cute little puppy that, you know, nobody could resist. Mm-hmm. And the next minute he might be seeing someone that's bringing in an 18 year old dog that's not doing well. Right. And, you know, to have to make that transition 15 times a day. That's just, it's, you don't think about that when you're walking in. You're thinking about only your dog, but you think about that with what veterinarians are faced with. That is Becky Godshaw, an animal lover with a passion for helping veterinary colleagues. And this is the Vin Foundation's Veterinary Pulse Podcast. I'm Jordan Benchia, Vin Foundation's Executive Director. Join me as we talk with veterinary colleagues about critical topics and share stories, stories that connect us as humans, as animals, as a veterinary community. This podcast is made possible by individuals like you who donate to the VIN Foundation. Thank you. Please check the episode notes for links and information mentioned. Today's episode guest is Becky Godshaw. She is the generous animal lover and creator of the Mike Dunn DVM Veterinary Student Scholarship. Welcome, Becky. Thanks, Jordan. Um, Exciting day yesterday. And um, (laughs) can't believe we've gotten this far. I know. Um, This has been a long time coming. We've had a lot of conversations. Yeah, everybody keeps asking me, how long has this process taken? And it's, it's just been such an ongoing process. It's it's hard to say. Yeah. I don't remember when we had our first conversation. We had our first conversation at the end of last year. Okay. Yeah. And then just bit by bit, you know, I think a lot of it is, this is a really big decision and this is a, this is a huge amount of generosity and, and working through the details and the conversations and the discussions and finding out what's the best way to do this, what's the best way for your generosity to have the greatest impact and, and understanding that this is the first cohort and seeing how it goes and knowing that there'll be lessons that we learn. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, let, let's dive into your story, Becky, because I love your story. I love stories in general. That's what this podcast is all about. So let's start with how did your love for animals start? <laughs> I don't know. I think I was just born with it. Um, um, always grew up with animals in our in our house. We had anything from a dogs and cats to deer, raccoon, flying squirrels, rabbits. Gosh. You name it. Um, <laughs> uh, always been a, a big animal lover. I think my love for dogs came when I received as a gift from my uncle. Uh, little poodle i was about nine years old and i would get that little dog all dressed up and had a doll bed for it to sleep in and it could sleep in my bed and and it was it was like my baby doll but it was my dog (laughs) (laughs) and so have you had dogs nonstop since then absolutely never been without wow wow and always just one dog or have you had multiple multiple dogs Mm -hmm. rarely just one dog. I think when I was young, it was mm-hmm. just that we had other dogs in the household, but that was my dog. Mm-hmm. But in, in my adult life, I've always had at least two mm-hmm. and sometimes three. And when did you first meet Dr. Mike Dutton? I met him shortly after I moved here. And I moved um, here in 1998. So I'd say probably by the year 2000, I was mm-hmm. using him as my vet. Mm-hmm. And what is it about your experience with him that had you enjoying going to see him? It's just he's so easily approachable. Mm-hmm. And after going to him for a while, you begin to feel like he's almost like your friend. You chat with him about his children. He asks me about where I'm traveling to next. It's, it's not just the dogs. and But with my dogs... I feel like they're getting the very best care without it being overdone. 
Mm-hmm. He knows the dogs. He knows their animals. He knows their names. He has a, a lot of compassion. Yeah. And I've had, had to put down several dogs, and that's just never an easy thing. Right. But he made it as easy as it can be. Oh. Yeah. And you've probably, I mean, you've probably had, because you've had animals your whole life, you've probably met a lot of veterinarians. Yes, I have. <laughs> and, <laughs> actually, it, that gives me even a bigger appreciation of, of what Mike Dunn does. It, it's like having the same doctor over and over and over again. Right. And there's that history there, right? Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So where did the idea for this veterinary student scholarship come from? It's it's difficult to get an appointment with Dr. Dunn unless it's an emergency. And and, and just in talking with, with him, um, he said how hard it is to get someone else into his practice because of the amount of debt that that students have coming out of veterinary school. And I think from that conversation, I said, well, wouldn't that be a fun idea to do? Um, yeah. Create a veterinarian scholarship. Yeah. As an animal lover, what do you see as the connection between your appreciation and love for animals and the, and veterinary medicine? Well, my dogs are only as happy as they are healthy and they are healthy because we get good veterinary care. That's the mother load, right? That's, that's, yep, that's, that's the goodness right there. I feel the same yeah. way with my animals and my dog. Yeah. What made you choose the VIN Foundation to partner with for this scholarship? Well, I've done a lot of other research on my own, kind of um, trying to figure out how to create the scholarship. Mm -hmm. And was beginning to get a bit frustrated with the, the whole process um, when I ran into a neighbor of mine who's a retired veterinarian and suggested that I call VIN Foundation. And that was late last year when I met you all. And um, you've just made the process extremely, extremely exciting and fun. I feel like I'm in very good hands. Yay. Well, we, yeah. we want the most important <laughs> thing is that you feel that your generosity is being honored and valued and cared for and absolutely and, <laughs> and that it's being used in the way that you want but you know many people have ideas many people have big ideas all the time and for multiple reasons it doesn't come to fruition so what was it or what is it in you do you think that was willing or motivated you to take this bold next step to see it through I think in, in finding the Venn Foundation and finding the structure that I was comfortable with mm -hmm. in creating this, that that I was going to have some control of how this was going to work and that the Venn Foundation has that structure and, and the wide breadth of people and experts to make this truly successful scholarship fund. I, I, I have great hopes, and I think that just based on the reaction that we're getting so far, I completely know that it will be. I think that it's, I think it's an extremely generous scholarship and one that is um, especially unique coming from somebody that's an animal lover that wants to support the veterinary profession. And I see that as really exciting for our veterinary colleagues. Yep, I hope so. Um because I will continue to have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you will continue to have dogs. And so you want to continue to have veterinarians that can care for your dogs. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Do you see this scholarship as a way to continue your love for dogs with your legacy? Yes, absolutely. I think in, in some of our conversations that we've had and getting to this point, my nephew mentioned that, yeah, we know Aunt Beck, where she was and what she was doing by what dog she had. And that was always, uh, always meant a lot to me that that was kind of cute. I'm not known for my cooking or my dressing or anything like that, but known for my dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and as we know, all dogs are so different, right? They, they are. are. They are. <laughs> Their own little quirkinesses. And, yeah. yeah. I, and so that's a, that's a wonderful way to think about it. I love, I love that from your nephew. Yeah. yeah. Where do you hope this scholarship will be a year from now? 
in in full swing that we'll have two veterinarians in school and be looking for two more. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a message you want to share with people that are just huge animal fans and animal lovers? I think in thinking about that question, it, it's what I've learned through this process is that the unique multifaceted life that a veterinarian lives. Mm -hmm. You think about, you know, in our discussions, you know, one minute a veterinarian is seeing a cute little puppy that, you know, nobody could resist. Mm -hmm. And the next minute he might be seeing someone that's bringing in an 18 year old dog that's not doing well. Right. And, you know, to have to make that transition 15 times a day. You don't think about that when you're walking in. You're thinking about only your dog, but you think about that with what veterinarians are faced with. The grace that um, Mike Dunn shows in doing that is is what motivated me in, in wanting to name the scholarship for him. Becky, that's beautifully put. Is there anything else that you want to leave our audience with today? I think that that's about, um, we've covered a lot there and um, I'm excited to get this underway. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you again for your generosity, for your support, your grace through all of it, and for really wanting to help and support veterinary colleagues. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you and the Venn Foundation. You've made this a fun process. I've really enjoyed doing it and I've got confidence in everything that, that that's going out there. Wonderful. I look forward to many wonderful, happy new veterinarians starting because Yay. of it. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Veterinary Pulse. Please check the episode notes for additional information referenced in the podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please follow, subscribe, and share review. We welcome feedback and hope you will tune in again. You can find out more about the VIN Foundation through our website, vinfoundation.org, and our social media channels. Thank you for being here. Be well.